42 weeks. That's how long IT worked on Doom 2 Hell on Earth. What did IT create in those 42 weeks? A new game altering weapon, the Super Shotgun. 10 brand new enemies with beautiful sprite work and interesting behavior that encourages the player to stay on the move. Lots of new textures and, of course, 32 exciting new levels for you to blaze through. Well, exciting is subjective. Anyway, 32 maps in 42 weeks is pretty impressive. You have to keep in mind that its map editor for Doom didn't have fancy 3D views or anything that resembled textures or sprites. To see what your level looked like, you'd have to run the map every time and that is time consuming. Naturally, because of this restraint, there wasn't much time to test the levels you were working on. Some minor mapping mistakes managed to slip past Doom 2's development. Let's have a look at some. This door track on map 6, the Crusher, crashes the original Doom executable for reasons I'll explain in a future analysis video. Maybe they should have called the map? <laughs> the Crasher! <laughs> the Spectres in map 17, Tenements, are placed too close to each other, causing them to be stuck. In map 21, Nirvana, if you raise the steps too quickly, it won't raise high enough, rendering the map unbeatable. A secret in map 27, Monster Condo, is stacked incorrectly. The teleport itself is a secret, but the player teleports away before they can step onto the secret sector. Through some wall running trickery, this secret can still be obtained. Map 15, Industrial Zone, also has a secret that was considered unobtainable for the longest time. Let's take a look why exactly it's broken. First, we need to take a look when the game registers something as a secret. The sector must have a secret property set for 1. Then the player's origin must make contact with the sector. If only your bounding box is overlapping the sector, the secret won't count. It also won't count if the player origin is not on the exact same floor level as the secret sector. Now let's see how map 15's broken secret sector is constructed. Beyond these stairs there's an unmarked wall that can be opened. Opening the wall reveals a secret teleporter that takes you to the top of the building with the wooden staircase. Not sure why, since this place is easily reachable from the very start, but knowing John Romero, it's probably a deathmatch thing. Anyway, unlike map 27, the teleporter sector is not the secret, it's the small sector in front of it. So what's the problem? If you walk slowly, can't you trigger the secret before the game teleports you? Well, it's not the teleporter that is the problem, it's the difference in floor height. The player's bounding box registers the elevated teleporter before the origin can make contact with the secret sector. The player's origin will be suspended, no matter how you approach it. This secret has left the Doom speedrunning community stumped for decades. This was the only map in Doom 2 speedrunners could not fully 100%. Well, none other than Mr. Zero Master found a way to finally trigger the secret without using any cheats of the 24 freaking years. Zero Master's video titled Pain Elemental reveals the last official secret of Doom 2 went viral and has over 4 million views as of making this video. So what did he do? Well, he plays the map like normal, and then he reaches the building with the blue keycard. The building that holds the broken secret. Zero Master wakes up a pain elemental and skillfully lures it to the secret teleporter. Here he stands over the secret sector and suddenly... The player briefly drops to the secret sector's floor level, triggers the secret and ascends back to the original position. Just what in the living heck happened? What did the pain elemental do? Why did the player sink into the floor? Why is the super shotgun's pixel so infuriating? You want to know, don't you? Oh, I bet you do. Without further ado, let's analyze how the pain elemental helped the Doom community to finally overcome this broken secret. Hey, um, Mr. Pumpkinhead? Hmm? You keep referring the secret as broken. Didn't you see John Romero's tweet back when Zero Master discovered the solution? Here he explains how the secret works and why it couldn't be tagged. Somebody asks, by design, right? And John says it was. Well, John was clearly being sarcastic with that reply. You don't know that. John could have been playing 4D chess with the Doom community for all this time. Do you really think that John, in that limited time Doom 2's development had, knew about this super obscure mechanic involving a pain elemental and used it for a secret that does absolutely nothing? Why not? He programmed the game after all. Right. Well, there's only one way to settle this. To John at Romero.com. Subjects, industrial zones, pain elemental secrets. Dear John, map 15's teleporter secret. Mistake or by design? And John's reply, yes, it was a mapping mistake, smiley face. We didn't have quality assurance at its software back then. Just us coders, artists and mappers. Mystery solved, it was a mistake. The end, see you next time.
Okay, so to help figuring out what the hell is going on with that pain elemental and the secret sector, we need to know which map elements are required. Obviously, we need two sectors. The secret one is 16 by 64 units, and the teleported sector is 64 by 64 units, and placed 16 units higher than the secret one. They must be surrounded by three walls, and have one opening. Alright, looks good. We also need a pain elemental. Let's place one here. We start the map. And stand here and wait for the pain elemental to spawn lost souls inside the player. Okay, it's happening, but the secret is not getting triggered. What else are we missing? Oh, right, the wall mustn't be open from the beginning. It needs to be a door. So let's add a door here and try again. Huh, hmm. So the door is a requirement too. Interestingly, the door must be moving. If the door reaches the top, then the secret cannot be triggered, only when the door moves up or down. Okay, we've got a good setup for this now. It's time to debug this and go through the code. Hey, um, Mr. Pumpkinhead? Hmm? Am I missing something? No, it's about your shirt this time. I really like it. Where'd you get it? Well, from the Decino merch store, of course. You've got a merch store? Yes, simply go to merch.decino.nl or use YouTube's built-in store tab to take a look. Remember No Chance and the infamous Imp Cliff? Of course you do. Wasn't that freaking funny? You can now wear that in original art form and show it off to the world. Or get a sticker and slap that on your laptop. Or perhaps you prefer something more simple, like A-R-C-H. Arch. You know, like... Air? What a slick design. You can order t-shirts, sweatshirts, tank tops, you name it. For the entirety of September 2023, you can use promo code DECINO666 for a 6.66% discount. Epic! Thanks, Pumpkin Man! Yes, thank you too. Right, so first we need to understand how the engine processes everything that is happening in the level. The Doom engine constantly runs something that is called the Doom Loop. In this loop, the game processes everything sequentially. Reading player input, running the game logic, playing sounds and rendering the graphics. OG Doom does all of this 35 times per second. For the Pain Elemental secret, we're only interested in G-Ticker, which processes all the gameplay related stuff. Inside G-Ticker, we can find more functions to run depending on the game state. The game state we need to look at is GS Level, which tells the engine the player is currently in game and not in an intermission screen or something. Here we can find even more tickers. A ticker for status bar stuff, one for the auto map, one for the messages that appear at the top. Only P-Ticker is relevant for the Pain Elemental secret, as that one handles all the gameplay stuff. Alright, P-Ticker is where it gets more interesting. Update the player's position and actions based on the user input in the Doom Loop. Run and process all thinkers in this level. A thinker is anything in the level that can think for itself. Things like monsters will process their next state and actions per tick, but the map itself can also think. Doors, crushers, lifts, blinking lights, these all utilize thinkers too. For example, doors use a thinker to determine how many units to go up in the current game tick, and also that it must wait for a seconds before lowering again. We are narrowing down the functions that will cause the pain elemental secret. P player think and P run thinkers. Let's take a look at P run thinkers. It basically goes through all active thinkers in the level. For instance, in this stick, the door's thinker will move its sector ceiling up by two units. Then it goes to the next thinker in the list, which is for the pain elemental. This one will move the pain elemental by eight units. Once all thinkers have been processed, the engine advances to the next stick and does the same thing again. Raise the door sector by 2 units, move the pain elemental by 8 units, and also advance to the next sprite frame if needed. We are mostly interested in the door's thinker, since this one is clearly required for the pain elemental secret to work. First, let's have a look what happens under normal circumstances, when there's no lost soul occupying the player's space. Every time the door thinks, it checks its surroundings for map objects. Why does it do this? In case there's something underneath the door when it slams shut. The door thinker will reverse direction when a living entity is blocking the door, or will crush stuff like items dropped by enemies and turn corpses into crushed piles of meat. The door scans for nearby map objects. Map objects near the door will run the pcheck position function. What this function does is check if the map object is occupying the space of another map object, and then it also checks which lines the map object is intersecting with. In that order, map objects first, then lines. Only the lines intersection one is relevant for the door, because that's what the door will use to determine if a map object is occupying space underneath the door sector. There's a global variable here called tmFloorZ, which is used for line or map object intersection checking. The default value of tmFloorZ 
is the floor level of the sector the map object's origin is in. Then the value gets adjusted depending how the map object's bounding box overlaps other sectors. For example, it is used to determine if the player's bounding box is making contact with a sector of a different floor height. If that's the case, then the player's Z value will be updated to the calculated TM floor Z one. So that all works as it should, but things change when the law solves occupying the same space as the player. Let's have a look. The sector scans for map objects and calls P check position for each map object. First it checks if another map object is occupying this space. Oh, this time it does. Hmm, that means the code stops here and never checks if bounding boxes overlap lines or not. That means TM floor Z's value is never updated, which means the player Z value will be set to the sector's floor height where the origin is, rather than the bounding box. Then the next tick calls P player think, which handles player thinking, including code which checks what the player is standing on. Well, with the newly set Z value, that means the player is technically making contact with the secret sector. So, trigger the secret. This isn't only limited to players by the way. Other solid map objects are also affected by this, uh, feature. Here you can see an Arachnotron with its origin hovering over the sector below. Every time the Pain Elemental spawns a Lost Soul, the Arachno Z value snaps to the origin's floor level. You could also use an Icon of Sin spawn to pull off this trick. Anything that can cause two map objects to occupy the same space will skip the bounding box check for lines. So what can you do with this info? I don't know. It's nice to know what's happening behind the scenes. I suppose you could make an insane puzzle map involving Pain Elemental and Cube Spawners. Perhaps a fun gimmicky map 32 idea for your Megawatt? And this is where the video ends. I took a bit of a break from analysis videos because life got too busy and I didn't want to burn myself out. I hope you found this one enjoyable and interesting. Thank you viewers for sticking around for so long. Thank you patrons for supporting this channel. And a very big thank you to the following beautiful people. 19 Day, Agonizing Oral Pain, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andrew Yukumchuk, Andri Diklin, aka Mark Hauser, Anthony Sicko, Art Cox, Beaks Make Me Coom, Ben of Langley, Big Gulps, huh? Bitcore, Bofu, Bowel Movement Tao, Ryan M, Bubski, Bunderstorm, Kirs, Cyprian Rusen, Arian Sista, Aaron Wolf, Par, Florida Man, Green Knights 9000, Happy Birthday Tigran, I Don't Fun King No, Jeffrey Catalan, John Hopper, Joseph Shantz, Katsuna Teku, Kirill Gorobets, Master Biggie, Matia Sippert, Max Payne 67, Mr. Cheron, Nighthawk 71, Old Man Han, Pete Peterson, Pocket, Paro Shi, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, Riley, Robert Wakely, Sean Anana, Small Bladder, Space Duck, Specteer, Steak Jacobs, Stephen Bone, Tech Okami, Thomas, Tim Goldberg, Timothy Collar, Victoria, Watch Space Dandy, Who's Ace, and Vizatko. I wish you all a pleasant day.